Hey, this is Mike. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, it's great talking with you today. You too. Ah, it's a pleasure here. Yeah. Hey, I have to tell you, I've been playing the hell out of five from Even the Sun, man. I think you got a home run with this one. Really? You like it? I love it. You know, there's so few, like, really good, like, you know, rock out there today. I mean, there's not much going on, and you guys have created, I mean, even going back to Harmonic, I mean, you created an amazing sound, but I think you took it to another level with this record. Yeah. We had to please, you know, the fans that have been supporting my drumming in that style for all these years, you know. I can, I can dabble in jazz, but, you know, uh, and, and the avant-garde world, you know, but I can't, uh, you know, forget the fans that put me on the map. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't consider this like heavy metal, heavy metal, or even like a Slayer-type heavy metal, where a lot of people will expect that because of where you came from. But it's just, it's yeah. just like bulls out, like, you know, a brutal hard rock. Yeah, it's it's borderline punk. Yeah, yeah. You know, but but it has a little bit of you know rock. Let's say with Train, you know, you could you could hear that, and it's kind of like a '60s you know rock and roll song, but with a thrash beat behind it. You know, and in all the other songs, they all have like different you know elements from different genres, but yet all translated through uh, a heavy. A powerful voice, you know. Uh, that that's very true. I mean, when you when you're working on music or when you're looking for a band to join or people to work with and projects, do you worry about or let like what's going on outside you influence you? Like, what kind of music is popular at the time, or is it just the feeling? Like, you know, whatever the side that you're going to work on and write with, and it doesn't matter if that's kind of relevant at the time. No, we don't. We don't look at that. We um, or pay attention to to any kind of existing reference on what we have to do. Um, I find uh, similarities in what other people are doing, you know, and, and what I'm doing as well, but I don't search for it. For example, you know, Dave Grohl, he appreciates working, uh, you know, and recording on the tape and uh, avoiding the use of, um, you know, software and, and, and computer editing you know, in music, and, um, you know, I feel, I feel the same way, you know, whereas he, you know, um, you know, he, he does that with, with, uh, Foo Fighters, I'll do it in a heavier yeah. element, you know, like film. Well, you know, the album definitely has, like, that live feel to it, where everybody's just playing at the same time, and it's not overly produced. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of how I like to, you know, do things. Yeah, well, because let me mind you, all the all of the uh, the albums that we appreciate, you know, let's say uh, the early Slayer records, Rain and Blood, South of Heaven and Seasons and the Abyss, those albums uh, that people always refer to as you know classics and the, the most amazing records, um, those were all done on tape. Those were analog. That was all pure, you know, human energy. Uh, without the help of any quantizing or, uh, you know, edits. Yeah. Do you, do you prefer the way it was back then, recording-wise? Do you think maybe too much technology today kind of affects the sound of what a band could do because they have a lot more tools at their hand now to kind of change things around the way they want, where back in the day, if you couldn't, you know, recreate it on your instrument, it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, well, 
you know, when we were recording on the analog, you know, you were able to um, actually, you know, feel what the band was going to be like, you know, when you saw them live. You yeah. know, you get a vibe from it because it was all done, you know, um, live and, um, you know, recorded live. So when you, um, when you take that element out, you know, all you get sometimes is, is a, you know, quantized, you know, uh, everything's on beat detective and, you know, the drummer is actually not playing at that point. It's the computers, you know. Yeah, and that's a shame of it all, too, but I, I'm glad that you you kind of don't fall into that category, which I'm happy about, and I know the band did some shows recently, but you've really never taken the group out, like, on, on a lengthy tour. Is that something that we might be able to get now, with the new record being out there? I hope so. It's been difficult to to acquire an agent uh, that'll, you know, put us out on the road here in, in the U.S. Uh, it hasn't been a problem in Europe. Uh, you know, we have... Uh, an agent there, you know, working on some shows for next year, and in South America, you know, we're going to be going there, um, you know, next year, and uh, so that hasn't been a problem, it's just the states, so we'll see what happens, who knows, uh, after the string of these interviews, you know, what pops up. Yeah, well, I mean, you've been all over the world, you've played, you know, probably almost every country that you could play in, do you find it that it's still kind of tough here in the U.S., the market, I mean, market-wise, is it still hard right now for like you know this type of music it's always been difficult you know the music industry isn't uh, a, a, an easy industry to be a part of you know there's a lot of ups and downs uh, you just gotta go with the changes you know uh, and, and you know let's say you know everyone complains about you know uh, the, the recording industry the record industry and um and royalties and all this, you know, and the internet downloads, you know, you just have to find other clever ways to sell your music or, um, or use your music uh, to benefit other, other things, you know, other ventures, whether it be commercials, television, uh, you know, the theater, or, um, or just it's simply being a resume. True. I mean, like I said, you've been doing this for so long. Did you kind of see the writing on... I mean, you know, CDs kind of took over from vinyl, and then it went to MP3s, and who knows what's coming down the line next that's going to replace MP3s. But did you kind of see the writing on the wall over the years that the industry was changing and that... I mean, the, the world was changing, that maybe the industry wasn't kind of keeping up with it, and they kind of got like, hit with a sneak attack by these downloads and everything? I'm sorry, say that question again? I was like, you, you've, you've seen that, like, you know, the whole world has changed over the last 10 to 15 years with, you know, computers and, and digitizing things and the downloads. And it seemed like the record industry kind of got caught off guard. At least that's the perception that it had. Did you see the changes coming yourself that, like, if, you know, the record industry doesn't, like, you know, step up its game, there's going to be a collapse of it? Uh, if I heard the question correctly, um, you, you basically say, did I see it coming? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't, you know, but, you know, you definitely noticed when it happened, you know, the years uh, following the commencement of, of, you know, the Internet and, and downloads and, you know, when, when Napster started, you know, um, yeah, you started noticing a change in your royalty checks. Yeah. So, I mean, oh. it, it, was, it wasn't something that you could, you know, you were able to foretell it's just something that happened. Yeah. Well, you know, you remember... You would, I'm sorry, Dave. Go, go on. Go on. No, I was going to say, I mean, like you, you mentioned in Napster, and you remember the flack that, you know, Laws got when he kind of came out against it and, and brought the attention to it. You know, I think, you know, a lot of people kind of ridiculed him and laughed at him, and maybe not the people from the industry, but fans did. But, you know, what he was saying, look what happened all these years later. He was kind of right on it back then. Yeah, he was. It, it's true. Yeah, no, he, he was smart. He tried to, you know, fight against it, and, and that was a great thing, you know, Lars did. And, and, and his team, um, you know, but unfortunately, you know, it's, it's still going on and there's nothing really at this point we can do about it. 
Now, I know. And it kind of always bothers me because, you know, you wouldn't walk into an art gallery and ask an artist to give you, a, you know, a painting off the wall for free. And you wouldn't go to a, a sculptor say, can you, you know, carve something out of marble for me for free. But they seem to think that it's okay for a musician to write music for you for free. And, you know, as much as you love music and it's creative and you feel it, it's still a job in a way. You know, it's still your job. I mean, it's a great job, but it's still a job. And you need to get paid for that to support yourself and to keep the music, you know, going. Exactly. Now, Dave, one thing I've always said that I felt about you is that, you know, your integrity is very high. I mean, there's nothing I could ask you to talk to you about Slate that hasn't been said or spoken about over the last 30 years. You left the band at the peak of metal in the 80s and recently again because you felt things weren't right and you moved on from it. That has to be a hard decision to make because a lot of bands would say, hey, I don't care how bad things are, what's going on, I'm going to stick it out because I'm in a group that you know makes money and is well known. I mean, it's got to be harder to leave, but in the end, I bet you can go to sleep a lot easier and I say, you know, I did what was best for me. And that, that could apply to any band or any musician. What I was saying is that uh, you left Slayer back in the 80s when metal was taking off, and then about a year ago, because you felt things weren't right for you, and things weren't the way they should be, and integrity is so important to a musician, I feel, and you didn't care that things were as good as they can get in music both times, you felt you had to make that move, and that's got to be the hardest thing to do, to walk away from a band that you know makes money and is well known, a lot of musicians just kind of stick it out with each other, no matter how bad things are, and they just get up there and play and move on. But how do you live with yourself when you have to go in every day and kind of be miserable? Uh, let's see. It's, first of all, you know, I, I, at this point, I don't want to talk anything about Slayer. I don't want I either, because it's so uh, new. You know, about, you know, how that, that felt or anything. All I know is I stand up for my... For, for what is right and um, and I just don't um, you know I don't waste any time yeah that's it exactly you know, um, that's it that's yeah. all I have to say well, no, the, the point that I was getting at was not even Slayer. Just, I mean, it could be any band or any musician. You see groups that play together for years where the members don't talk, they don't communicate, they don't even get together to write music anymore, and they just do it for the sake of because they're in a band that's well-known, and they don't want to lose that. Well, you see, yeah, but what's important to me is, uh, you know, and in that situation, you know, I don't think that's, that's, that's real uh, because when musicians... You know, get together. Uh, you know, it's it's like a common moment. You know, when you when you create music together, and you should be able to get along with the musicians that you're you're working with. Um, it's a very uncomfortable um, you know scenario when when you're trying to write music with people that you know you don't get along with. I mean, it's just it's not conducive to the creative process. So, you know, for bands like that to exist, you know, hate each other on stage and, uh, you know, they can't even look at each other when they're off. Yeah. You know, that's, that's terrible. That's not, that's not good. It is. Well, you know, I, you don't have that problem with film because it just seems like you, Pancho, and Jerry have got this thing down to a science. I mean, it's like, there's such a vibe yeah, between do. the three of you. And, and the thing, too, is that we get along really well. I mean, before we go to the studio, we'll get together, we'll go grab a coffee, you know, something to eat, or we'll break in the middle of a improvisation session and, you know, go get a bite and then come back and start part two. So, um, it, you know, it's, it's really different. And I think that, you know, like I said before, that adds to uh, the creative process. It, it's very smooth. It's easy. 
Are you sure? <laughs> Dave, is, is there anything left out there for you to do that you haven't tried yet, that you will, yeah, you want to go out on the edge and try any sound or style of music that's you know maybe way outside the realm of what people would expect that you want to give a shot? Uh, musically? Musically, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. I've never given it much thought, but, you know, I'm always in, in search of doing, you know, um, creating different styles of music and, you know, fusing music and rhythms. And uh, So who knows what, what the future will bring, but uh, my door is open. That's good to know. You know and and to, to, you know, to different opportunities and, and ideas, so that, uh... it's great. It really is. Well, Dave, I'm not going to keep you. I appreciate you talking with me today. And I hope that somebody in the U.S. gets a hold of you guys and puts you out on the road because I really want to see you live. There's not The, the record is great, yeah, but there's guys, nothing like live, you know? You guys, you guys would really enjoy it because, uh, you know, all three band members are up in front, front of the stage. So it's like a wall of sound. And, you know, it's very high energy. And it's uh, good stuff. Oh, I'm hoping it happens in 2015. Dave, the best of luck. The new record is absolutely killer. Thank you. Everybody should have this album. Thank you, man. Take and care. You do. Take care, Dave.